Last week, we learned how to eat the word of God. How do we take that spiritual food and live on it? And that spiritual food brings health into our bodies. But today, the Holy Spirit wants to teach us how to drink the waters of heaven. Many people that have died and have come back, they all talk about the waters in heaven. Because the waters in heaven are alive and they literally sing. It's a beautiful song of life. When we get saved, the Holy Spirit enters us. The Holy Spirit connects with our spirits. And living water is supposed to flow from heaven into our spirits. From our spirits into our soul into our bodies, and out into all the world. This is the Father's desire. It is the Father's desire that we drink of Jesus. Last week, just for a quick recap, we saw Jesus sets the captives free, as he set us free. The sea opens, they take what they have, they cross over, but then they ran out of food. You can only carry so much, amen? <laughs> that will preach right there. You can yeah. only carry so much. After that, you're depending on the Lord. And they had no food. But Jesus, the Father, provided food from heaven called manna. And where we're going today was, you know, they were eating of the manna every day. But then they ran out of water. Not only did they run out of water, their families ran out of water. Their livestock ran out of water. I want you to get a visual on this. Now, I don't know how many of you have ever fasted. When you have no food, you become very humble. I don't know how many of you have ever hard fasted. Hard fasting means you get no water. We're going to start in Exodus 17, verse 3. We read, the people thirsted there for water, and the people murmured against Moses and said, why did you bring us out of Egypt just to kill us and our children and our livestock with thirst? This describes us, okay? Because we have to remember that these people just saw the most incredible miracles that were never even heard of before. Not only did God open the sea, but they walked in sandals. Hello? We've all worn sandals on dry ground. On dry ground. They watched their enemies forever be extinguished, just like we have because of the atonement of Jesus. And then they were fed every day. Every day. Did they know God was with them? Absolutely. Did they have to read the book? No, they watched the miracle. This is exactly where we are, but we still murmur, complain, and grumble. Amen. And God still loves us. Thank you, Jesus. Here with Jesus being saved, we know that not all of our needs are yet met. We're still seeking God, but the Lord wants to teach us how to drink and how to carry living water. Even in the wilderness, God had his spirit upon his leaders, like Moses, like our pastors and our yeah. teachers. You know, and we all look forward, even, even every one of us in this room, we all look forward to the day when we can speak to God, see God, clearly hear from God, and do everything with God in our life. This is what the atonement provides for each of us. So imagine Moses, oh, millions of people, all grumbling to him. Did Moses ask for that job to carry God's people? Oh, no. In fact, just the opposite. He, he did everything. He did everything. And finally, you know, because he used to stutter. God wanted him to be a preacher. But, you know, God brought Aaron alongside. We all need each other. Amen? We all 
need each other. And even with all the miracles, with all the faith that we have, we still murmur and we still grumble because our needs are not met here, not all the way. And we are going deeper with God. That's exactly what he wants. In Numbers 20, verse 8, take the rod. This is what God told Moses. Take the rod, assemble the congregation, you and Aaron, your brother, and tell the rock. Did you hear that? Tell the rock before all the people's eyes to give forth its water. And you shall bring forth to them water out of the rock. So you shall give the congregation and their livestock drink. Anybody here talk to a rock lately? We're talking to a rock right now. Jesus is the rock. Amen. Are we supposed to pray? How do we pray? We tell, we talk. Amen. This is what we're supposed to do. What are we supposed to tell them? Everything that we need, <laughs> everything going on in our life. Okay. Now the rod is a, is a symbol of something that we use to hold ourselves up. It's something that we use to support ourselves, uh, to walk through life with. You know, if you see people climbing, people that are older, people on a ski slope, they need that to support, to keep them in balance. And Jesus is our shepherd. And we know he carried the staff and he, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort us. It's comfort. This rod was meant for comfort. Tell the rock. In Hebrew, the word tell means debar. It's the debar word of God. Now, I did a serious teaching on the debar word of God. Here's the difference. Telling somebody something is telling somebody something. But when you speak the word of God, it has to be accomplished. Yes. That is the difference. That's the difference. Praise God. So the Devar word of God, my, oh my. And his word means to arrange things, to put things together, to bring an answer. It's a declaration. So they were told, Moses was told, tell the rock to bring forth water. When he spoke what God told him to speak, everything was coming into arrangement for a rock to disperse water. How much water? Now just picture, picture this rock, okay? P just picture a rock. How much water do you think would need to come out of this rock to give millions of people a drink and all their livestock? that's a lot of water <clears throat> who is our spiritual drink the holy spirit amen so the command went forth for the rock to give water and the rock did give us water he gave us his holy spirit much later in the new testament praise god out of the rock comes our spiritual drink and jesus is the rock upon which we stand. So we are to speak to God ourselves for our needs and all of our concerns. When we tell Jesus our needs, he releases his Zabar word of God, his answer. The answer is then given to the Holy Spirit. Where's the Holy Spirit? Right here in each of us. Amen. Praise God. So let's hear in the New Testament now what Jesus has to say. So in John 7, verse 38. Now, on the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out saying, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture said, out of of his innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. So who is this water supposed to flow out from? Us. Each of us. We believe in him. 
these waters, living waters, need to flow out from each of us. So it was the last day of the feast. Who is the feast? Jesus, the bread of life. Amen. If you were sitting there and Jesus stands up and cries out and says, if anyone thirsts, come to me. Would you listen to him? Absolutely. Because he's here with us right now. To believe those who believe in me, to believe is the symbol of one who is dry, cleaving to Jesus as one with a dry mouth. We not only hunger for him, we thirst for him. And it says to believe is to trust. You know, the people, the people who crossed over the Red Sea, they had to trust God. They had to trust God. Now, they tried to trust Moses, but Moses knew he was not the one who had the water. He did not have the food. There's only one that we can trust. His name is Jesus. Amen. For our daily life to be sustained, we have to trust Jesus. And how do we, how do, we do this? We know it's through the word of God. Amen. Now, Jesus is a vine, but we are his branch. And the staff, the rod that Moses carried is the branch. It's the branch. We need the vine. Amen. So Moses was representing Jesus. We are represented in that branch and life is to come not only to us, but to others. So how? That's the question. How? So in the early church, Jesus was there in person and history was forever changed. But today he is here with us also present in the Holy Spirit. The person of the Holy Spirit is here with each of us. And Jesus said, we are going to do greater works than he did. Greater works than the early church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why? Because we have the blood. We have the atonement. Jesus had the Holy Spirit. We have the blood. We have the oil. We have the Bible, we have the Holy Spirit, and Jesus, amen? And it's all to glorify the Father. So Jesus is the only source of spiritual life. We see this in the Old Testament. We see it in the New Testament. That's why Jesus is the same, past, present, and future. He doesn't change. He never will change. So the ministry of the Holy Spirit is given to all who come to the one true God, all of us. It doesn't matter status, class, color, race, tribe, nation, language. All are welcome. Praise God. And when we come to the ministry of the Holy Spirit, we receive the internal spiritual blessings of heaven. Where are they? We don't have to look all around for them. Go sit in a particular building. Go do a particular thing. It's all inside of us. It's all inside of us. Look what happened to Jesus when the Holy Spirit came on him, when he was baptized. Jesus didn't do any miracles. He was baptized. The Holy Spirit came upon him. He was immediately taken to the wilderness to fast. He fasted 40 days. And you know, some people will say, Well, that's crazy to go without food. He is the word of life. To go without food 40 days. What was the purpose of all of that? We know the enemy was tempting him. We know. We read it. But the Holy Spirit was showing Jesus, you know, I am your source right here. It doesn't matter what's going on in the world. But inside Jesus. He was learning how much power was inside of him, the Holy Spirit, the same Holy Spirit that is inside each of us. Praise God. 
we receive the same living water, the same Holy Spirit, past in certain, uh, in certain amounts, and now in fullness. Praise God. So Jesus continues to give us his drink. His living waters fill us and expand his kingdom on earth. We feed on the word to be sustained. But the living waters of God flow out from us. Do you know how long people have waited for what we have right now? We can read through the Bible all the generations. Even the prophets foretold us all about this. We don't have to wait, thank God. But imagine how long people waited for what we have. So in Isaiah 55, verse 1, it says, wait and listen. Wait and listen. They had to wait. We don't have to wait. Everyone who is thirsty, come to the waters. And he that has no money, come by and eat. Yes, come buy priceless spiritual drink without money. And without price. Why? Because Jesus was going to pay the price. This was Isaiah. He was prophesying of what Jesus was going to do for us. And here's what I love the best about the scripture. It says, come drink without price for the self-surrender that accepts the blessing. What if we give our lives to Jesus but we don't accept the blessings. The water won't flow, will it? How do we know about the blessings? He's teaching us. We all want to accept his blessings, amen? So in Joel 2, 28 and 29, it says, and afterward, I will pour out my spirit. This is about us. This is done. Upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. Even upon the men servants, even upon the maid servants in those days, shall I pour out my spirit. This is to wet our whistle. This is just some of what we receive. These people were longing for that day. You can even feel the dryness in their mouth, just waiting for the day to come. The day has come for us. Amen. Are we going to accept these blessings? So how do we come to drink of Jesus? We know only he is our living water. We've all tried ourselves, the world, everything out there, everything they have to offer. But we know that only Jesus can quench our thirst. He doesn't just want us to take a sip every day. Or, you know, like when we're learning as children to read the word, we take our spoonful, go to our bowlful, go to our playful. And he doesn't want us to just take a glass full every day as we mature. You know, the glass is like our full daily requirement, but it's not only about us. He wants us to drink so deeply until living waters flow out of our innermost being yeah. to others. But many believers today do not feel satisfied. Instead, they feel dry. Some basically even feel dead, yet they believe in Jesus. And they may want to drink of living water, but they don't know how. So we go to the word who teaches us. So in Isaiah Chapter 12, verses 3 through 6, the Lord tells us how to drink of living water. There's six ways. Therefore, with joy will you draw water from the wells of salvation. And in that day, you will say, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. Remind them that his name is exalted. Sing songs to the Lord, for he has done something majestic. And let it be known 
in all of the earth. Cry out and give a ringing shout, O inhabitants of Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. Amen. So number one, to drink of Jesus, we are to give thanks to the Lord. This is how we drink the living water. And it's easy. It's easy. First thing in the morning, let it be a habit to give thanks to God. Jesus has done so much for us through his death, through his resurrection. And after that, he cares so deeply for each of us. He prays for us day and night. And we can drink him in day and night because we have so much to be thankful for. And he is worthy to be thanked. Amen? Amen. He gives to us every day, every night. He's not a God who came, left, see in heaven. That's not him. Mm -hmm. He is here for us day and night, the living person of God. We drink him in as we respond to him. We know he did this. We say, thank you. Living water is coming in from heaven into us. So what's the opposite of being thankful? Rebellious. Not thankful. It's like being a lover of yourself or of money, or I'm too busy for you, or I got to go do this, or I got to go do this, or, you know, all the excuses in the Bible. Yeah, that's us. That's us. Until we realize how to drink the living waters of heaven, those excuses, we all got them. We don't want them, though. No, no more. And it makes us disobedient. It makes us ungrateful. And we become unholy when we don't understand this. We just go through our day thinking God's a million miles away. And one day we'll see him in the great by and by. But we've missed the personal relationship with God. We don't want these negative characteristics because these negative characteristics, when we wake up and we're just all about us, our job, and we totally forget about God, even to say thank you or good morning, God established our morning every day. He chose the sky. He chose the clouds. He chose everything for us while we were resting. Amen. But if we go through our day without him, these negative characteristics drain us of living water. Yeah. This is how we get drained. We don't want to be drained. So last week, I, I, I mentioned to pay attention to your emotions. So if you, you find yourself being grumpy or cranky, I know we're from all different countries, whatever you call it, you're just miserable. You don't know why. You just feel something isn't right. That's your emotions telling you. Go get a drink of living water. Amen. When we drink of living water, we're saved from all that stuff, all that negativity. Drink it deeply. Drink deeply. You will feel the difference immediately. It's like, oh, that's gone. That's gone. Praise Jesus. So, Every single hour of every day, we have living water available to us from heaven to refresh us. Anybody need to be refreshed? Yeah. To supply us all of our needs. So how do we do this? So we can wake up in the morning and we want a drink of water. Now, I know you're all going to try this and you're all going to feel the difference. I want you to feel the water. So we open our eyes. We thank God for bringing us into a new day. We thank God that he saved us, that he protected us, that he sang over us. Do you know he sings over us while we're sleeping? Mm -hmm. He's so close to us. He cares so deeply for us. And then we respond by saying, thank you, God. 
I don't know everything you're doing for me, but I know you are doing it. And I know that you're there for me. And I want to say thank you. I want to go deeper with you. I know I don't want to go through this day without you. I know you know all about the world. You know I got to go to work. You know I got to go to school. You know I got to go minister. But I'm not going without you. And I'm so grateful that you are here with me. Your bottles of water are full. Amen? Amen. Living water. When you pray for yourself, you're being refreshed. But when you pray for your family, your friends, even for other people that are praying for you, that living water is being refreshed in them as well. When we see, well, this person isn't doing this or my kids or my boss or whatever, and we pray for them, we are releasing living water from heaven into their lives. Praise God. So then we get up, we get dressed. We're still praising God. We get our daily portion. We read. We meditate. So we're off to work. We're meditating on the word. Oh, the Lord told me today. I read that word. Oh, it ministered to me, Jesus. I am thanking him. I'm chewing on the word. I'm receiving living water. And my heart is exercising in thanksgiving and worship. Do you know the angels watch us? Do you know that the angels, they don't have the Holy Spirit. They know the Holy Spirit, but they don't have the Holy Spirit. We have the Holy Spirit. Do you know the angels learn from us? Do you know that the angels are amazed to watch us? Praise the Lord. They love it. They love it. They gather around us. They gather around us when we worship God, when we read the word, like right now. The angels are listening. They are rejoicing. Praise God. So the second part, call upon his name. Call upon his name. Do you know that each time we speak the name of Jesus, as Moses was supposed to speak to the rock, throughout our day, throughout our prayers, even as we're surrounded by other people, we carry living water. His name is Jesus when we speak his name, when we tell of the great things that he has done in our lives, when people say to us, how can you be so happy? Didn't you read the news today? We have Jesus, amen? It attracts them to us. That living water reflects off of us, attracting people. How can they be so happy? Just them trying to figure that out because there's not peace in our world. Every time we call upon his name, we are drinking living water. Now, for me, like now, or when I minister, when I minister and I talk about Jesus, I can literally feel his presence surround me. Because when you call upon his name, he responds by showing up. Amen. Okay, I'm going to try to calm down here for a minute. Thank you, Lord. He shows up. Amen. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And sometimes, sometimes I cannot even pray. There's a person sitting on my computer on Zoom wants to tell all the problems of their life, but Jesus knows them all. All I have to say, do you believe Jesus? <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's it. Because when you call upon his name, he cannot wait to respond. Father, we ask that we all respond the same way Jesus responds to us. Amen. There's something to pray for. Jesus delights when we speak about him and he fills us with living water. That's who he is. Just as he did with the early church when he walked the earth. He's now carried in us, amen? 
The third way is to make his deeds known among the people. Now, I love to talk about Jesus. I can't help it. I can't help it. He flows up in me. He overflows in me. I cannot help it. If a person asks me a question, my answer is always Jesus, and I know where he is, and he is your answer. Amen? When we make his deeds known, people need him desperately, desperately, and he walks through life with each of us. He's not kidding when he said, I am your shepherd. He walks through life every day with us. Now, we have free will. We can ignore him if we want, but that doesn't mean he's turning away from us. He's there for us. He's always there for us. When we talk about the things that he has done for us, I thought, you know, when, when I got healed, God said, when I was on the floor, I'm sending you out into full-time ministry. When I got up, I wondered what my ministry was going to be. I thought my ministry was going to be telling my testimony, but that's each of our ministry. Each of our ministry is to tell our testimony of things God has done in our lives. I can remember, you know, having young people around me that did not know God. They know the world. They lived in the world and they were glad that they lived in the world. And all I would have to say is, oh yeah, I remember when I was like that. But then my life changed. And this is what happened. They are all ears. They are all eyes. Because until we speak of what he has done in our lives, they don't know that there's another option until we speak. We tell the good deeds of Jesus. This is in the Bible. Do you know that our lives are supposed to make other people jealous? Our lives are supposed to make other people jealous because we have God. <laughs> we have the answer. We have the almighty, the creator of all loving us, loving us. And don't think the devil hates it because he hates it. He sees Jesus loving us. Amen. When we're hanging around with the wrong type of people and we don't feel comfortable talking about Jesus, we, we know that, you know, they probably don't want to hear about him either. Just pay attention to how soon you begin to feel dry in that situation. When you're around people that don't want to hear about Jesus, just pay attention to the immediate dryness that you feel inside of you. Amen? Because these are living waters. Then pay attention to when you speak of Jesus to people, you can feel the living waters rising up within you. So the fourth way is to remind people that Jesus's name is exalted. When a person comes to me with a problem or a demon or things in their life aren't flowing, they're sick, they don't know what's going on, they want to go deeper with God, even that's not working. Jesus is always the answer. This is what it's saying. Remind them that Jesus's name is exalted because his name is above every other name. So for the demonic, his name absolutely makes the demons tremble. It's written. They know it. But do we know it? I know it. We should all know it. Amen. What is the authority in that name? How exalted is the name of Jesus to each of you? These are questions that you can ask later when you're praying. Really? How much power really is in that name? So to me, when people come with diseases or sickness, you know, the doctors, they don't know, but they go right through the alphabet, you know, the ABCs, the ADHD, the OCD, they've got names you cannot even pronounce. Yeah, but it doesn't matter because Jesus's name is above every disease, yeah. every name. Amen. Even boredom. <laughs> Jesus' name is exalted. 
even above boredom. Amen. When we speak of his name, we are drinking from the wells of salvation. Number five, sing songs to the Lord. Praising God is one of the best and easiest ways to drink of living water. Now, we all have listened to other songs. Yes? But there is a song. And isn't it amazing? Now, I'm older. But, you know, I used to listen to hard rock, all kinds of whatever music when I was younger. Now, if I turn the radio on and one of those songs from 30 years ago comes on, I will still remember those words. Isn't that an amazing thing that we can remember songs from way back when? But there are songs inside of us that we do not know. Imagine that. You know, Jesus sings over us. You know, the Bible tells us that when a person repents, this is what happens. We really mean it. We know we, we made a mistake and we're sorry. The Bible tells us that Jesus surrounds us with songs of deliverance. Imagine that. Jesus doesn't have to shout, get out devil, like Peggy does. Uh-uh. He sings a song. He sings songs of deliverance. The enemy has to go. Praise God. Many times we're in a situation. We don't know what to say. Okay, like I deal with people like the other day, you know, people in the hospital, people having surgery, their family's there. They don't know if their loved ones are going to make it. They don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. But under my breath, I can sing a song. I can hum a song. I can sing a song. And those living waters come out and comfort that whole family, go into that hospital room and take care of the person in that bed. Amen. Think about how David sung to the Lord. You know, we think of David as, oh, this mighty king and warrior. <laughs> David knew he needed Jesus. Praise God. And he sung from his heart. He sung from his heart. And each of us have a song in our heart. Not only do we sing it, but it most of the time comes from heaven, comes from heaven in Jesus' beautiful name. So if you're in a situation, you're in a crowd of people and it's not a good environment, sing a song in your heart, in your heart, and watch those living waters flow. Praise God. That definitely was a word for somebody. And the sixth way, yeah, is to cry out, giving a ringing shout. Amen. What do you think it was like for the people of Israel? Dry, thirsty, even their animals looked like they were about to drop and fall over. Do you think they said, Moses, what are you doing? Moses, let us complain to you before you go and pray for us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, God loves us. God loves us. We need to all be filled with living water, especially if we plan on ministering to God's people. One of my favorite scriptures is God, these are your people. God loves each of us so deeply that we cannot get in the way between God and each of us. Because God's love is so unique for each of us. We have to let him flow. Praise God. And that's what Moses was doing. That's what Moses was doing. He would listen to all the people complaining and he would go to God. God, these are your people. I'm getting out of the way. What do you want me to do to flow? That is the key to ministry right there. We totally depend on the Holy Spirit for our food, our drink, our provision. When we look outward and think, well, I'm going to go get a better job. I'm going to go do this. All our answers are right here. All of our provisions are right here. What do you think the Israelites did when they saw all that water gushing out of that rock? You got to think those sandals got wet that time, huh? Their knees were even wet. They were drinking, we're talking millions of people. One rock, one miracle 
His name is Jesus. Imagine that's what a ringing shout, a ringing shout is when you know God has answered your prayer. This is what we do. We give a ringing shout because we are saved. We are saved. We know we are not perfect. We know it, but we know that we are loved. We are treasured. We are cared for. And God is with us. Amen. For those of us who do not know Jesus, it is a very dry and desperate time in our world, just like for the people of Israel. And even for those who believe that don't know how to drink, but Jesus has given us life. He has given us life abundant and how we respond to him, how we absorb him, how we drink and feed from him. So now that we know how to drink the living waters of God, I just want to give you something to think about. How do we go even deeper? How do we go even deeper? So now we know how to drink the living water. You're going to do it. After this, you're going to do it. You're going to feel the living waters rising within you. You never paid attention to this before because we didn't understand it. But now you're going to do it. But here's what Jesus wanted me to say. How can we go even deeper? So this is the thought that I'm going to conclude with. In John 2, 7, it said, Jesus said to them, fill the water pots. Do you know that we're all clay pots? Fill the water pots. So they filled them to the brim. Jesus will also turn this living water into the wine of heaven mm -hmm. to share the joy of the Lord with others. This is who we are. This is how we drink. This is how we share Jesus with others and our families, our friends, our villages, our hamlets, our towns and our cities should never be the same again, just as it was in the early church with Jesus. Amen. JesusTodayMinistries.org. We are here to minister and to pray with you right in the comfort of your own home or your office. If you are seeking counseling, healing, deliverance, financial breakthrough, if you feel that there is a block or you're experiencing hindrance in your blessings, please know that God cares about you and all that concerns you. Hi, my name is Peggy Golden. I am a pastor and I have a master's in Christian counseling. God has made a way for people all over the world to receive counsel, healing, and deliverance through the use of technology right in your own homes. God heals, saves, and delivers his people every hour of the day. There is no distance for God. If you do not know God, if you are seeking him, or if you have found yourself in a situation that you need help getting out of, please know nothing is too hard for God. Please visit my website at JesusTodayMinistries.org. You can get to know more about me there. And please remember to read the testimonials of what others have experienced by contacting this ministry. There is no fee, but you are able to make a donation. For those who are in the States as well as international clients, we can use voice or video chat on Skype, WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger, or Viber. I look forward to praying with you and all that God will do.